What we bring you in closing government is a justification as to why this is the only solution to this problem and the specific mechanisms by this will lead to a lasting, lasting peace both in Iraq and the wider region. That's what wins this debate. Five things in this speech. First of all, responding to some of Richard's aggressive mischaracterizations, both of our case and of the current political situation. Then four areas of clash. First of all, I'm going to talk to you about the Islamic State. Second, I'm going to talk to you about why this is an invasion that will work. And then, actually, no, just three. And then thirdly, I'm going to talk to you about the necessities of partition, both for Iraq and the wider region. So first of all, in terms of rebuttal. Richard tells you that the reason the power sharing deals haven't worked in the past is because they were bad ones. This is a really good one. I think that's a pretty bold claim to make only a fortnight into its existence. But the problem that we see is that notions of power sharing lack credibility because of the history of failure of power sharing agreements. So, this one's just going to be like all the rest. You need a meaningful partition of the sort which we outline in order to have credibility. No. Secondly, he talks to you about how Iraqi lives are going to be made substantially worse under this policy. He tells you what's going to happen is that ISIS is going to be able to bump its recruitment. Failing entirely to deal with Fergus's case as to how the main drive for joining ISIS is not the hatred of the West or not the desire for an Islamic caliphate, but of a, but of a response to what is perceived as an inequitable distribution of resources and of opportunities in Iraq sit. Secondly, they tell you that Iraqi lives will be made worse in the long term, as there will never be faith in an Iraqi state which couldn't fight off ISIS on its own. The problem is that we're not suppo supporting a new Iraqi state, we're supporting free. We are supporting free where there is division, we are supporting free where there is trust that you'll have a government that can represent you, that can treat you fairly for all of the reasons that Fergus gave you, and again, so. went on to respond to sit. They tell you that the only other option is to have the Peshmerga fighting. Once again, we think that the Peshmerga are incredibly good at defending themselves. What they lack entirely is the impetus or the resources to defend wider Iraq. You give us no reasons to believe otherwise, no thanks, carrots. Next in terms of this stuff about demilitarization and how the US is never going to what, have the impetus to, lack, to act in the long term. First of all, just on a very sort of meta debate level, we are assuming the necessary powers, and moreover, we are saying this is a policy which would be in the US's interest to carry to fruition. Secondly, what we would say, though, is we think this is a sort of, it's a sort of policy <coughs> which could be potentially popular with an electorate. We say the notion of pushing a, 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 an organization which is as evil as ISIS, which is as militarized as ISIS, is a good one. No. The no reason that the last Iraq war took so incredibly long is not because the initial crushing of a militarized group took so long, but because the sub-conflicts which emerged as a result of a dissatisfaction with the government that was set up, which was seen to be inequitably dividing resources between Sunnis and Shias, continue to stoke these tensions. We remove that on our side of the house. This is an easier conflict to fight than last time. This is a better solution. No thank you. So, oh, also, uh, this awful mischaracterization of Sunni culture as being exclusively a militarized one, not paying attention to the number of Sunni democratic leaders who do exist in Iraq, was aren't given a fair say in the government. We can give them a fair say if the Sunni state would be a peaceful one. No. So, moving on to the Islamic State, uh, IS. Um, we think we have a bit of a confusion on side proposition. Because at the one hand, they say that they are strong enough that we're never going to be able to beat them. But on the other hand, they say that given time, it will collapse in on itself. We give you compelling reasons to think that the Islamic State is strong enough that it will not collapse in on itself, but we are a hell of a lot stronger and can beat them and do so effectively. A couple of reasons why they are currently strong. Um, whilst, they are, whilst they have a small, whilst they have small numbers, they are very skilled, they are very brutal, no thank you, they are very good at tactics, they are very ideologically driven. Moreover, as Fergus tells you, they are well funded. It's simply not true they have no backers in the, in, in the region. Uh, they don't have state backers, but they have incredibly rich Sunnis who are willing to donate to that cause, okay? We say we remove that on our side of house and we can fight them, and we can fight them out of Iraq so they stop inflicting all the tragedies which are happening at the moment. But the important thing here is irrespective of whether or not ISIS does fall apart, the lingering memories of Sunni acquiescence to the actions of ISIS will always taint the ability of those two groups to interact in a unified Iraq. That's what gives us the impetus to have a derived a divide. Point, no. Moreover, as Fergus tells you, whilst it is the case that you may be able to fight the, uh, the IS in the north, it is simply not the case that you can chase them out of Tacris or Baghdad simply by giving the Peshmerga murder arms. You need a stronger solution in order to be what is now a very entrenched and strong force. No. These guys no. say that the rhetoric will still survive. We agree but no one's going to listen. You remove the impetus of that rhetoric, you remove the material causes which cause people to join ISIS, and they are going to collapse, and we will have a safer Iraq. Gareth. When you occupy an area and commit atrocities and abuses, that drives people into the hands of the only people they think can that can defend them. That drives them to ISIS. You are going to unify a fraying group. So, firstly, 
We think that we are going to smash ISIS to pieces very quickly. Secondly, we say that we are going to immediately set about the process of building states, which are going to provide a immediate counter to the very narrative that ISIS thrives upon. Okay? We are not going to have the sort of Sunni acquiescence or the joining of ISIS when we can actually offer people a genuine alternative. Here's why it is a genuine alternative. Here's why the invasion is going to work. As I've already extensively outlined, there is simply no other option. But as Fergus points out to you, the US is a whole lot stronger. Richard says, you're going to need to analyze that. Luckily, he already did when he told you why we're more experienced, have more firepower, have, more, have greater numbers, have the experience of being in, in Iraq before, have learned from those mistakes, have the ability to act and the ability to act decisively. Moreover, these guys say that the USA is always going to be seen, is never going to be legitimate, because it will always be seen as a tool of the Shias. Nonsense. It will be seen as explicitly breaking up a Shia-dominated government for its unfair treatment of Sunnis and Kurds. That is a powerful counter-narrative for the US to be able to engage in. It's simply not true that they will turn back to ISIS. Finally, in terms of why partitioning is necessary, Fergus tells you very extensively why the sense of inequitable treatment and the acquiescence and the memories of the acquiescence of Sunnis during this conflict will mean that you can never have a united Iraq. What happens when you divide it is give people a sense of ownership and belonging and control over their state. You have homogenous communities. Moreover, with the sorts of policies which Edinburgh built into their model of ensuring equal power sharing and of ensuring US oversight and non-aggression pact, this is a peace which can be lasting and meaningful. People don't want to live in a continuing state of war, but they are willing to acquiesce to that when it is seen that they are being completely treated unfairly by the only other alternative. We give them fair treatment, we enable them to live happily. Finally, on this, in terms of Iraq potentially falling into the hands of ISIS and becoming a regional last case, we are happy to line the Syrian border, as has been said. We are happy to you know, drive them into Syria if necessary, but the problem is comes when they're able to flit between the two. We crush ISIS, we make the region and Iraq a safer place. Mr. Speaker, it is an incredible honour to stand in this chamber and this round. It is an honour to stand alongside so many great friends, and it is an honour to side for something I genuinely support. I'm incredibly proud to propose.